Water is vital for all forms of life. Oceans hold 97% of surface water. Only 2.5% are fresh water from rivers, lakes and precipitation. Observers estimate that soon half of the world population might be menaced by insufficient water supply. For some time it was thought to be useful to take care of this essence of life. It's probably 15 years ago that we started with rainwater management, infiltration and harvesting systems. We gathered a lot of experience, that's pretty worthwhile. But suddenly things changed. Further reduction of water consumption doesn't make sense, says the German Association of Energy and Water Suppliers BDEW. What the hell happened? German environmental techniques are regarded as some of the best in the world. A German company even finished a modern test facility recently that covers all kind of possible incidents that might occur in connection with sewage and vulnerability of water resources. Storage filters and pumps can be tested under severe stress conditions. We do not only offer equipment and rainwater harvesting systems. Naturally, we stick to the restrictions and fresh water regulatory works within the test facilities ourselves. So not more than two liters of water per second may leave our production site. Two liters per second? That's tough. Waterworks in other parts of the country fear for channels and pipes to fall dry and being eroded by aggressive sewage and dump that might not be flushed away fast enough. Es gibt auch, das muss man ganz ehrlich eingestehen, in Kommunen oder auch bei Ingenieuren, sagen wir mal, durchaus Widerstände gegen diese neue, neue Technik aus verschiedensten Gründen. Or should this only be argued to cover the running costs of canalization? To fresh up the bill and steadily heighten the fees for stunning billions of euros that are buried in an oversized infrastructure down in the ground? Yeah, this klingt absurd. yeah, that sounds ridiculous. In former years they installed taller pipes than today. They had to be of this size to capture all of the water. Today we infiltrate rainwater in the ground. It is an important resource for us and the water table. But the quantities that we spare cause a miscalculation for the waterworks. So they tell us to flush and flush. If you buy a washing machine today, for example, it needs 20 liters less than an old type. It's the same like the energy sector. Lamps and lights need less energy. We demand that German regulations are being adapted to the progress of water technology. Even the European community wants to reduce water consumption from 130 down to 80 liters per person and day. That should not be ignored in our own country. In fact, a lot of urban areas all over the world have similar problems. How do you get people around? How do you uh, have enough energy at reasonable prices that don't pollute the environment. When it comes to energy solutions, when it comes to waste solutions, to the ecological development of neighborhoods, Germany is really very advanced and we have a lot to learn, which is why we do bring people over to Germany. Rainwater harvesting and swale regal infiltration systems are some of the methods to prevent water from roads to flood into the next creek and destroy the habitat of quite a number of species and life forms. This is a swale system that provides conveyance of the water that's generated from the adjacent roadway and the houses and allows it to slowly convey um, a lot of the water to infiltrate into the ground. But at a really large event, all of that water goes down to the creek system. If the swale system wasn't here, the conveyance system would, would send water to the creek like a fire hose and blow them out. Not far from Seattle, experts in biology and water treatment from the Macaw tribe have an eye on water quality. Village Creek is very important to the Macaw. Its designated use is for ceremonial purposes as well as fish habitat. And it's also one of our water quality monitoring sites. Close to the so-called civilization, nature is quickly pushed out of balance. And rising temperatures cause drought, even there where we don't suppose trouble like that. Climate change is something that's very evident to us here in Nia Bay. The patterns of weather are different now. And we've been monitoring uh, in-stream flow for all of the watersheds. And the in-stream flow every year has been in decline continuously since we've been monitoring them. By the ocean, we don't have a deep water table. 
so we're surface water supplied. Uh, surface water for us is is how we get our drinking water. Normally, you know, we get rains at the end of August. We get rain in in September, but for no rain to occur from just I guess Macaw Day's weekend, last weekend of August, and no rain from last week in August all the way to the almost the end of October. Um, you know, we were in a state of emergency. I think in the future, though, we're going to need to be more innovative. I think as a mismanagement right now is that, you know, we make all of the water fit for drinking, but we don't drink all the water. You know, we wash clothes, we wash dishes, we wash our cars, you know, we bathe in the water that's made, that's fit for drinking. And I think we got to find a way to, to better manage that. Perhaps climate change might offer some more advantage than simply clouds and bad weather.